Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be doing my first look video at this Palmetto State Armory dagger. Now this is one of the compact daggers. They have the compact and the full size. Obviously I've already added some stuff to it, uh, namely a Holosun 407C and the Holosun PID HC. Uh, hopefully as things get dark, we'll start using this a little bit more. Um, now, I am far from the first person to be doing a video on the dagger. These things have been out for almost a year now, uh, at least being readily available. Uh, however, this is my first time putting any rounds through one. Uh, I brought 500 rounds with me out to the range today. Uh, we're just gonna do a whole lot of shooting with this thing today, doing a bunch of different drills, uh, doing some precision stuff, doing some speed stuff, just seeing how this thing performs through these first 500 rounds. Depending on how things go through these first 500, we might continue going on further uh, or you know I, I'm pretty optimistic about it uh, but again we'll see what happens after after what happens today now uh, the Gun does come with one of the Magpul 15 round magazines. However, the vast, vast majority of the magazines I'm gonna be using today are all Magpul magazines. And the vast majority of the ammo I'm gonna be using is s and uh, 100 and I believe this is 124 grain full metal jacket. Uh, basically, I wanted to give this thing as few reasons to fail as possible. And I figure using Glock factory magazines and high quality full metal jacket ammo is going to help get us there. We are gonna be doing some suppressed shooting later on with uh, some subsonic ammo um, but just to get you an idea of what we have in store today now full disclosure I did not pay for this dagger this was provided uh, by PSA on a T&E basis for those of you not familiar basically they're sending it out to me I'm going to be doing a test and evaluation which is what T&E stands for uh, and then at the end of the T&E period which in this case is 45 days I can either choose to send the firearm back or decide to pay a certain amount, in this case cost for the pistol, in order to keep it. And again, I think depending on how things go today, that's gonna to determine what my, the outcome is after those 45 days. Um, but assuming things go well today, which given my recent experience with PSA, has, uh, I, I have a feeling it will, uh, then we'll try to drive this thing up to a thousand rounds within that 45 day span, uh, range time allowing, and uh, hopefully get a good full length review after that. But again, today's gonna be kind of the first look, first shots, doing a whole bunch of drills, doing a whole bunch of shooting, getting about 500 rounds down range, um, all in the course of a couple hours, and just seeing how this thing performs under realistic use. Got a Magpul mag here full of the S&B uh, and we'll see if it wants to run on some steel at 20 yards. do it. 
screws came loose on the optic. So now we're gonna try this thing suppressed. This now has my uh, Yankee Hill R9 on it. I'm gonna be shooting some of the 150 grain Federal Syntec ammo. I just found that this shoots well suppressed in the past. So we'll just take some shots and A, see if it cycles and B, uh, see if it works out to be a good suppressor host. Uh, after this we'll try it with some regular supersonic ammo as well uh, so far so good now we'll try it with just some regular FMJ again this is the 124 grain SMB same stuff I've been shooting all along it's going to be the first time I'm shooting with one of the Glock 17, 17 round max. So first malfunction, uh, prematurely locked, no, no it didn't lock open. Um, so it'll be hard to see while keeping this thing down range. The bolt catch isn't in the notch, so it's not that I locked it open, it just hung up at the rear and it's hard seized up oh so i think what happened if you look at the guide rod the guide rod is stuck on the booster piston which is pretty unusual but that's causing it to fully lock up because now the barrel can't move which is preventing the slide from being able to move let me see if i can pry that down sure enough that's what it was so basically you can see, hopefully, that the guide rod uh, is pretty much almost making contact with where the um, piston is. Let me see if we can go the rest of the mag and have that same issue pop back up. Yeah, same thing again. So it's not locked open on the tab, but it seems to be locked on that. Let me just show how I'm gonna fix that. So I have my little adjustment tool for my hollow sun. I'm gonna hold the slide back just so that it doesn't like slam closed and then I just push that down and that releases the slide again. So that's that's the issue I'm having. Um, that's interesting, that's not something I've run into before and I'm not sure if that's just because this is a bigger, heavier can or what. Um, just for grins and gigs, let's try to finish off the mag. It seems like that's gonna do that every time. Let me go back to the other ammo and see if it wants to repeat again. Now it just so happens I have my Glock Model 45 out here with me, so pretty much set up in a very similar way. Uh, let's see how this does with the same can, uh, with the same type of ammo, the same s &B ammo. So, um, I do get a weird thing, and I, I've experienced this before with this gun, where the slide is kind of sluggish to go back into battery until I reset it. Don't know what that's about, um, but seems to run okay. I've run this thing a lot with this can, um, and I haven't experienced an issue like that. That being said, the interface between the guide rod and where that piece is uh, on the Nielsen device, or the piston itself, uh, sits a little bit different on the Gen 5 guide rods than that older style Gen 3 guide rod. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick overview of the PSA dagger that I'm reviewing. Again, I've got some additions going on here uh, and we'll get to those when we get there. Uh, but this version is the optics ready version of the compact dagger, so the Glock 19 size that is also suppressor ready with threaded barrel up front. Now. In this version, they make a couple different versions of the Optics Ready pistol. Uh, in this version, it's got the, uh, kind of like the Glock MOS system, it's got the rear sight behind the cut for the red dot. 
Now, the sights on the uh, Optics Ready versions, at least all the ones that I've seen, are all blacked out on the sights. That's honestly fine with me, especially for the price that these pistols come in at, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, perfectly acceptable and at least their metal sights even in the lower uh, price bracket versions of the PSA daggers you're still getting all metal sights uh, so I think that's a lot better than even the factory options from Glock as far as that goes uh, now the cut in this ver uh, case is for the RMR pattern as you guys can see as I mentioned previously I am running the Holosun 407C um, having some issues with it today, but that is not, I, I don't think the fault of the pistol other than me getting it really, really hot. Um, fitment is pretty good. There is a little bit of space um, behind and in front of the optic, uh, but the lugs do fit tight. So I'm not worried about this thing shearing the uh, securing screws that it comes with. Now the threaded barrel up here is half by 28 as one would expect for a nine millimeter uh, handgun. Uh, this one does also come with a little rubber O-ring in there, which is nice because you can help tension the um, thread protector against that and prevent it from walking itself loose. If you guys haven't ever had experience with threaded barrels, if you don't have one of those, uh, again, this thing will just come loose through use. Um, and that's usually something people have to throw in. However, more and more companies are including some mechanism for retention like that. Now on the slide, again, we have some recessed cuts up on the top of the slide up in the front, almost kind of like CZ-esque in that respect, which I, I think is a good thing. Um, theoretically, it's gonna aid in reholstering, not that I think you need that much aid, but hey, all, every little bit helps. And we do have some nice angled front serrations that match the angled rear serrations. And then we've also got a little bit of a lightning cut there on the side of the frame. Might be hard to see from your angle there. There are models that have more slide cuts, um, but this is just kind of a more straightforward version. Now, um, being a Gen 3 style Glock, we do have the small magazine release here. Now, as I've mentioned in many, many videos, I've got my little Whopper Jr. hands, so, or my little Donald Trump hands, whichever you prefer. Um, that does create a slight issue for me with the Gen 3 mag releases, as I'm sure you've seen throughout this video already. Um, but again, that's more of a me thing as opposed to a gun thing. Now, one thing I do like is that the slide lock, while being perfectly well, effectively flush with the frame is extended at the rear here. So you can maybe see that the rear tab extends a little bit past where it would normally be on a factory glove. That definitely makes it easy, again, even for me with my little Whopper Junior hands, to be able to hit the slide lock with my firing hand, which is not something I'm used to being able to do. So definitely a bonus there. Now the trigger, I think, is very fascinating because we don't have the standard Jangus trigger that you get on a factory Glock. We have more of a, a hinged trigger, more reminiscent of a Smith & Wesson. Now, whether or not that gives it the same qualities of the Smith & Wesson triggers that we've seen in the Grand Thumb Mud and Ice Tests, I don't know, but uh, definitely not a issue for me. I think the trigger is about as good as a factory Glock trigger, um, so do with that information what you will. Now, there are relief cuts on both sides near where the takedown lever is, uh, and it has a little bit of a ramp, almost like, I don't know, the pedal in the vehicle that makes it go faster, which I'm not gonna explicitly say because companies like to be upset with me when I say those words. Um, but that does give you a nice little ramp so that when I'm getting my firing grip, my thumb can just sit right in there and, and provide some good downward pressure to maintain control of the pistol under recoil. Now it's hard to tell because of the uh, Holosun PID light that we have here that we'll be testing once things get a little bit darker. Uh, the trigger guard is a more unique cut in comparison to the factory Glock uh, trigger guards. Not a problem for me. I don't, I'm not one of the people that puts their finger in front of the trigger guard. Um, so I don't notice anything weird there other than potential fitment with holsters. Now uh, the holster I've been using today has been my Safari Land holster. This thing is set for a Glock with a Surefire X300. This kind of fits it's not a perfect fit um, but it kind of fits well enough for me to be able to use it out here if things continue to go well maybe i'll invest in a dedicated holster for this one now one of the big departures from the factory glocks with this gun that i am actually a fan of is the grip now the grip angle is more or less the same however the texturing is a little bit better and uh, it has a lot more curvature to it so it's not as blocky as the factory glocks now i don't have a problem with factory glock grips i've been running glocks for a very very long time uh, the first handgun i ever purchased after turning 21 was a glock 19 gen 4 i've put many many thousands of rounds through that thing so i'm not 
I don't take issue with it, but this does, in my opinion, feel better. And while I'm not a huge fan of the bump on the A2 pistol grips on uh, AR style guns, the finger bump here actually fits perfectly with my hand. And I'll use my left hand here to demonstrate. But when I get my finger locked in there, it just really locks my hand high up on the grip and just kind of forces me. And it's hard when I have to rotate it here uh, to show you the angle uh, to get the high tang grip. Let me do it with my right hand just so you can see better. Um, but I've got a nice high tang grip when my finger's up in there. Now I will say that I am noticing a slight hot spot uh, on my knuckle uh, where I'm starting to get clock knuckle. I've heard a lot of people say that because of the rounding that PSA does out of the box on these that they don't experience that. I am however experiencing that if I choose to purchase this and keep it I'll probably round this out a little bit more just to prevent that. Um, but I mean Again, with many, many thousands of rounds through Glocks, uh, my knuckle has basically stopped caring at this point. Now, I've heard a lot of much ado about the um, little cuts here as far as allowing to more easily extract a magazine. Let me get a Glock 19 mag here. That's uh, a 17. Now, I'll use my ones with the extended base plates here from uh, Midwest Industries. That there is to allow you to more easily rip and strip the magazines. Now, while I haven't had any malfunctions today that would require me to be able to strip the magazine out like that, um, the fact that magazines haven't always wanted to drop free due to my inability to fully press in on that magazine release. Um, having something that also gives you aid in catching it, if I'm having to do uh, single hand manipulations, that just gives me more of an opportunity to be able to strip that magazine out if I need to in adverse conditions. Again, not something we're gonna be using all the time, but it's gonna be really nice if we do ever have to use it. Now internally, if I take this thing apart, uh, it's very, very much Gen 3 Glock. Um, let's see if we can get it to focus here. Uh, we've got essentially the same internals as a Glock uh, Gen 3, uh, except for a metal guide rod, which honestly I don't care about. Uh, some people make a big deal of that. The polymer ones work just fine. This one comes with metal one, which is working just fine. Uh, on the frame, again, everything looks effectively identical to a, uh, to a Glock Gen 3 19. Uh, in fact, as I understand it, a lot of parts will actually interchange with the Glock Gen 3 19 parts. Uh, so uh, again, I, I don't know what much, how much more you could ask for. One thing I will also say is that with those little recessed cuts around the takedown lever, it makes it a lot easier to get down on both sides to be able to release that. I know for a lot of us who've shot Glocks for a long time, it doesn't matter, but as someone who works at a gun store, showing people Glocks for their first time, walking them through how to take it apart, that is by far the hardest thing for some people to figure out how to do efficiently, and having those extended on this gun definitely helps that. You'll notice that uh, I no longer have a red dot back here. That's because I got real sick and tired of that thing coming loose. And I'm like, well, yeah, well I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm aiming at the target and pulling the trigger. Um, I think maybe we'll continue the rest of the testing without that hall of sun. And again, I don't think it's the fault of this. because Those screws had thread locker on them. Uh, maybe in between uh, before I come out next time, I'll try something else there, but I just, I don't want to mess with that all of a sudden anymore. Uh, hopefully this light does a lot better once the sun continues to go down a little bit further.
Well, in an interesting plot twist, I think both the Holosun products I had out here with me today failed. Uh, my PID is no longer turning on. Yep, there it goes. So I had to unscrew the bezel, screw it back in. Uh, I guess we'll keep trying, otherwise I'll switch to the X300 and actually finish out the nighttime shooting with this. So at this point we're about 450 rounds in, we've got about 50 rounds left to go, but I'm gonna wait until it's actually dark to do that. Um, so I figured I'd kind of wrap up my initial thoughts on this thing based on my experience so far. If something happens once it gets dark that's going to significantly change uh, what I'm about to say, then I'll definitely make an addendum to it after, uh, after the end of the video. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty damn impressed by this thing. Um, Again, 450 rounds is by no means an exhaustive test. This is just kind of a first look. Um, but as far as indications of where things are gonna be going from here on, things are very positive. Now, <laughs> the biggest weak link we had was that Holosun uh, optic. Now, you guys know I'm a big fan of Holosun optics. It's just that thread locker could not hang when I got this thing hot. And this thing was getting very, very hot. It was getting uncomfortable to hold uh, because I was putting so many rounds through it in such a short period of time. So we'll revisit that once we come back out. But uh, it's safe to say at this point, we are gonna be coming back out with another 500 rounds of ammo and we're gonna get this thing past a thousand rounds because it's just holding up really well. It's doing everything that I've asked of it um, and it's doing it surprisingly accurately. Now again, that dot torture drill that I showed you at the beginning, it's only at three yards, but still, when it's able to pound rounds into one ragged hole, even at that distance, that's definitely a good sign. Um, now, is this gonna be the most accurate pistol on the market? Absolutely not, and I don't think anyone's making that claim, but it is going to, going to be as, as near as makes no difference, as accurate as the person pulling the trigger, which 99% of shooters out there, the gun that they're shooting is mechanically more accurate than they are. Um, so again, the ergonomics I like, except for that little harsh edge on the trigger guard. Uh, but again, as long as things continue to go the way they've been going through these first 500 rounds, I, I have a strong feeling that this is gonna be adding itself to my collection. Now the malfunctions that we did have uh, were with the silencer attached with supersonic ammo. When it was running the subsonic ammo, it was running it just fine. Now, uh, one thing I've heard uh, people complain about is these things, their performance with um, different types of hollow point ammo. That is something I plan on testing as things continue from here. Um, because that obviously, if this is gonna be something you're gonna trust your life to, Hopefully you're gonna be, if you're gonna conceal carry with something like this, you're gonna do it with hollow point ammunition. Um, so obviously knowing how well it works with different types of hollow points is gonna be beneficial for you. Now, again, when we were out here today, we were running good quality factory Glock magazines. We're running good quality Seller and Bella ammo. And I know I'm mispronouncing that, get over it. Um, the 124 grain full metal jacket, I mean, I've shot, I don't know how many thousands of rounds of the SNB nine millimeter ammo over the last even just couple of years, and it just runs. Uh, so 
I wanted to set this thing up for success. If we were gonna have malfunctions, I wanted it to be the gun and not the magazines or the ammo. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of the Magpul Glock magazines. I've heard other people say the same thing and for good reason. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure my microphone was actually turned on after my experience with uh, recording without recording the video without audio. Um, but I've had a lot of issues with Glock magazines uh, from Magpul over the years, and I've also had issues with Glock or uh, Magpul AK mags over the years. Really, if it's not the AR-15 magazines for Magpul, I'm not going to touch them. Um, but they make really good AR-15 mags for what that's worth. Um, now the other equipment we were using uh, that we should probably mention, again, the holster is a Safari Land uh, holster. This is one of the uh, SLS systems, the self-locking system, no, sorry, ALS, auto-locking system. Honestly, guys, I get the, the Safari Land nomenclature mixed up all the time. Again, this is for a Glock with a uh, X300, so that Glock 45 I showed you guys earlier, that's what this thing's normally riding in. Um, but, it works good enough to be able to run this out here today. Now, again, because things are going well and it's looking like this is going to become a part of my personal collection, um, I do plan on picking up a actual dedicated holster for it. Maybe we can do more inside the waistband stuff. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it with the PID light or maybe like a Streamlight TLR7. I'll figure that out. It probably depends on how things go tonight once the sun goes down, um, but uh, it, it's working well. And then also, Worth mentioning, the mag pouches uh, were from HRT, so this is the HRT, um, their new belt system and their magazine pouch system for the belt, and it runs Glock mags, it runs high power mags, it runs really pretty much any double stack 9mm mag I've run so far, and in all fairness, I've only run double stack 9mm mags since picking up this belt, so I couldn't tell you how well it does with other stuff out there um, for what that's worth. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, PSA did send out this pistol for free for testing. If I uh, choose to keep it at the end, then I will have to pay for it. Things are looking pretty good so far. Um, but all the ammo put through this thing so far has been su uh, supplied by me uh, with the help of people over on Patreon. So the support I get over on Patreon is directly uh, funneled into the channel to provide for ammo, optics, and other items to help supplement reviews. Uh, like the, the Holosun 407 uh, was paid for by myself. Now the PID light down here, this was actually sent by a third party uh, resale, uh, or retailer, uh, Optics Force. I'll have a link to their website down below. They sent this out for testing along with a magnifier that I've been testing for a while. Uh, so. Big thanks to them. We'll be talking more about them when I actually do the review of this light on the gun. But again, through 500 rounds, uh, not too bad. I, I would say if you guys wanna see every single round fired, I will have a link to an unlisted video down below, which is just all of the shooting footage from today for anyone who actually wants to count every single round I fired. Spoilers, it's gonna be over 500 rounds. Um, but feel free to do that if you want to make sure that I am being honest, which if you can't trust that I'm being honest, you shouldn't be watching a review of mine. And speaking of reviews, uh, I will say normally I don't watch, if I know I'm gonna be reviewing something, I don't go out of my way to watch a bunch of other reviews on it because I don't want other people's experiences to sully my own. However, in this specific instance, I did want to search out other people's videos because I wanted to see how the track record was on these guns because they are relatively new to the market, being only out for about a year. And I can say, based on what I've seen from other people's reviews, they seem to be making improvements um, as they go with these guns, which is not uncommon for PSA. PSA's been doing that with their ARs, their AKs, their AKVs, really pretty much every firearm that they produce. They see the feedback and what's happening from real world, real world users and incorporating that into improvements uh, in the next iteration of that product line. Uh, so again, a lot of the issues that I've seen people complain about in the past, I have not experienced yet with this one. Again, final conclusions will save until the uh, first thousand rounds are through this gun as to whether or not I think this is something worth adding to your collection because I'll be speaking with my own money at that point. Uh, but again, as far as first indications go and first impressions go, I'm pretty impressed. So anyway, with all that being said, as always, I hope you got something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.
So first thing we're gonna do is gonna test A, my ability to shoot the pistol, and B, its potential for precision. Now you can probably already tell, these are my first 10 shots through the gun. There's also one right at the top when I was just getting the dot zeroed. Um, dot one, you have five shots slow fire. Dot two, draw and fire one shot five times. Uh, on three and four, you draw, fire one, fire one, and you do that four times. Dot five, you draw and fire five shots, just the strong hand only. Uh, on six and seven, you draw, fire two, fire two, four times. Uh, dot eight, you, uh, you have your gun in your weak hand already, and then you start low ready, and then fire uh, five shots in a weak hand. And then on nine and 10, you're doing one R ones. One shot into number nine, reload, one shot into number 10. Uh, so this is going to be a total of 50 rounds. You score it out of 50, so any shot inside the circle or breaking the line counts, any shot outside does not. Uh, so again, this is gonna test my ability to shoot this pistol kind of right out of the gate without any warm up other than the 10 shots up there and just see how it does. Now, I'm gonna be doing this at three yards, so we're gonna do it really close. Um, and people who think that's maybe too easy, maybe you need to try it yourself. So first up, we have dot number one, which is just five shots to fire, uh, taking your time, making sure you can get all five shots in the circle. All right, not bad. Dot number two, now we're gonna draw, fire one shot. Um, each time, reholster, draw, fire, one shot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, do an admin reload, which I know some people aren't fans of. Uh, and uh, because I'm gonna need uh, eight shots for this next course of fire, and um, there's just not enough in a Glock 19 magazine to do that. So again, with dots three and four, we're drawing, firing one. So you're gonna have to forgive the noise when it's down on live range and that's just the reality of it. But for dots number three and four, we're gonna draw, fire one round into three, one round into four, reholster. We're gonna repeat that, uh, I believe, four times. Now for number five, we're gonna draw, fire five rounds, strong hand only. <laughs> One of those got dangerously close, uh, but just broke the line from as far as what I can tell from here. All right, so now I'm gonna do another proactive reload here, because I'm gonna need eight rounds for this next one. Uh, we're gonna be draw, fire two into six, two into seven. Let me make sure I know how many times. Four times. So I'm gonna have to do a reload at some point here. Alright, so now we have what's probably going to be the hardest for most people, and the shooting offhand only on to circle number eight. Uh, this is where, if I'm going to throw it, this tends to be the one. Again, almost lost it on one of those. 
Um, and now we're gonna do one R ones. So I'm gonna I got a loaded round in the mag, insert an empty magazine so it locks open, and then uh, it's going to cause me to do a reload, and then I'll swap back and forth. And we're doing that, I believe, three times. Yeah, three times, and that should get us to 50 rounds for a total of 60 rounds through the gun. Mag didn't want to drop free on that. Could just be me getting used to this Gen 3 style mag release. I think it's just my angle, get, trying to get on it with my reloads, and being used to Gen 4 and Gen 5 blocks. Uh, I gotta get used to flipping it in my hand. You might have noticed I went to flip it, and then I had a hard time reestablishing my grip. That's just something that has to come with reps, I guess. But let's see how I did. All right, so overall really good. Now we're only at three yards, so there's really no excuse if you're a semi-competent shooter to be able to just nail all of these. The closest I came to having any of the ones go out was on the single hand right hand and on the single hand left hand. Everything else, um, this thing is doing uh, good at just putting the rounds where I'm wanting to put them. And again, only at three yards, but this is promising. If it's struggling to do this at three yards, um, or you as a shooter are struggling to do this at three yards, then there's not much point in pushing much further than this. Uh, you really need to work on your fundamentals. So let's start picking up the pace a little bit. So those of you unfamiliar with this, uh, this is the Bear Solutions drill. We're gonna have five rounds in the left square, five rounds in the right square, reload, three rounds in that center bear head in the middle. Uh, you can do this with a handgun, they say three, five, or seven. Because we did so well with the dot torture drill, I'm gonna do this at five yards just to push it a little bit harder. All right, broke the line uh, with one of those shots. Get set up to do it again here. Uh, even though I just changed my battery on this dot, it's already flashing at me saying that it's dying. Always fun trying to track your sights when it's, you know, blinking at you. All right, that was uh, 987, so not the fastest in the world. Let's try that again. All right, that was uh, 1101. That reload was really slow. Uh, you know, I I feel like this thing reloads quickly um, whenever I'm not like doing a timed event. Um, but as soon as I start setting the timer off, all of a sudden the mags just don't want to drop free. So since we're still clean, um, try this again. Uh, see if I can't get better than nine seconds. Eight five two, so better time wise, um, and we're still clean, just barely. So though, actually, let me see if I can one more time here. Got one in the pipe. But my first shot on the bear was a little bit high, so let's go take a look so you guys can see. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, 
how I did. So not sure how well you'll be able to see from over there. Uh, this side, I actually did really well. Once I got my sights on target, I was able to just kind of pound them in there. Transitioning over to this side, that movement over started to open things up as that um, target acquisition uh, changed from iteration to iteration. Uh, my first two iterations, I got ones just on, the, or first couple iterations, I got ones just breaking the line over here, but still in. But then that very last one, I plunked one right up off the bear in my fastest time of two to one. Um, so, give me that information what you will. Uh, I think mostly it's only limited by me, not the gun. Or also, the optic isn't doing me any favors, but I'm sure a lot of you would have expected that. <laughs> 